title football in that part of the world was halted and postponed to a later date or because of the coronavirus pandemic. And now we understand that the 2020-2021 season is set to kick off on the 11th of September. Now to draw more light on this, we have Pascal Nbe all the way from Istanbul, Turkey, a sports consultant joining us to talk about this. Good to have you with us, Pascal. A very good morning to you, Doka. Fantastic day is surely uh, is going to be uh, out here, and I see that you're looking really good, you know. Yeah, thank you very much, and I hope you're keeping safe out there. Uh, yeah. Mm, true. True. Now, let, let, what's happening in Turkey? I mean, we've heard a lot about the Turkish Super League resuming, and a date has been announced. How confirmed is this? Uh, the proposed date uh, for kickoff right about now is uh, 11th of September, and I believe uh, it's surely going to uh, happen because we know that some other leagues across Europe have uh, kicked off already. Yeah. Uh, but talking about what happened earlier due to the coronavirus pandemic, uh, when they went on a break and they came back and made sure that they finished uh, at the league. Uh, but this time around, uh, in the Super League, talking about the topmost division in the Turkish League, uh, there was no relegation only promotion, which means uh, this season, talking about the 2020-2021 uh, season, we'll have 21 teams competing uh, for the prestigious uh, Turkish Super League uh, trophy. And uh, talking about uh, the second division, where there will, there will still be 18 teams. And uh, from, the, uh, Super, from the Super League, at the end of this season, uh, there will be four teams getting relegated at the end uh, of uh, the league. True. I also heard uh, something about the transfer market. Is there any, any, anything new that will be going down with the transfer market over there in Turkey? Yeah, a, a lot. A lot has surely been going down. You know, uh, talking about uh, our own uh, Nigerian players, uh, beginning with a, a man called Brown Ideye, mm. uh, who uh, won the Nations Cup in Nigeria back in 2013 as he made his uh, switch from Aris Saloniki in Greece uh, to Gostipi uh, down here in the Turkish Super League. And also yesterday, uh, there was also an official announcement from Tony Aspo, uh, from M.M. Edward, uh, who made a one-year loan switch uh, from Hajik Split in Croatia. Mm -hmm. And uh, two other players uh, who have also uh, made a move to the same club, talking about Menem Aspo, uh, in the persons of Bernard Bouboua, a former under-20 uh, Nigerian national team player, mm -hmm. and a former Kamepilis player in the person of Ibrahim Al-Hassan, uh, who made a switch from Altai SK uh, in the Turkish uh, uh, TFF one league and uh, another man too, a uh, Sunday Alini um, uh, from Galatasaray, making a permanent move to especially for uh, in uh, the first division. Uh, these are like the confirmed deals that have happened at the moment. But there are lots of players who are rumored uh, to be coming to the Turkish Super League at the end of the day. Yeah. So does this mean that uh, some of these Nigerian players have found home uh, in uh, the Turkish Super League? Uh, I would say uh, Turkey and Africa have had a kind of good relationship. You know, it's not uh, uh, a relationship that started yesterday. It's been a long time this relationship has uh, been on. Uh, from the likes of JJ Okocha, Uche Okechuku back in the days, you know, where they played for Fenerbahce. And the man, Dan Dubu Amokachi, uh, who also played for Besiktas uh, back in the days. So, so you can see that there's a long uh, relationship between Turkey and African players, especially Nigerian uh, players. True. Now, look, looking at the players who have moved over to um, Turkey, talking about some of these Nigerian players, do you think they stand a chance to compete for a role in the Super Eagles, knowing that um, some other players play in the top flight division in other leagues across Europe? Uh, as I would say, uh, the national team uh, is not for a specific kind of people. Everyone has the right you know, to play for the national team. Even you, Doka, if you're fit enough, I believe that you could also make it uh, in yeah. the national team. So uh, wherever you are, I believe if you're doing your business very well, you know, if you know what you're doing, I believe uh, you stand a chance you know, to play uh, in the national team. So, uh, talking about uh, the man uh, in uh, Turkey here, he plays in the first division, talking about Shehu Abdullahi. Mm. He's a national team player. That tells you how Genetra believes in him and uh, Genetra sees that he's one man who can really bring a lot of teams, you know, mm. to the Super Eagles. Mm, true. Now, you know, a lot of people have compared the Turkish League, comparing it to the other leagues in Europe, like the EPL, the Spanish La Liga and the likes. But these players, the likes of um, Alimi, there's also Brownie there, who I would say is well experienced. Going over to Turkey, it, it, would you say it's an upliftment in his uh, football career? Uh, at this point in time, uh, talking about upliftment or maybe demotion, I don't think uh, that's uh, what's key at this point in time because mm. taking a look at what the coronavirus 
uh, pandemic, uh, you know, cost you know a lot of a lot of players who were meant to make some supposed moves uh -huh. were not able to make some supposed moves. But at this point in time, we're talking about the balance. He should be in a team where he's playing week in week out. So far, he's doing the business of football properly and efficiently on the field of play. Uh, I believe uh, he's doing well for himself. You know, uh, Brownie Day has been one man who has been uh, 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 consistent. You know, in in the European team from when he made the move first uh, for. Uh, in uh, Switzerland, I can remember back then in for Nikita uh, Samax, and he made that switch to uh, Sochaux in France, and from there to Ukraine, Ukraine to West Bromwich Albion, and you see the team he has played for in Europe, he has shown that consistency that I know what it takes, you know, to play for European top side, and any time, you know, I, I play for any team, I always give my best. That's the man Brownie Day for me. All right, and uh, once again, looking at the players uh, playing in the uh, Turkish Super League, we have the likes of Brownie Deye, M.M. Edouk. And M.M. Edouk, I remember him when he played for Enyimba. Imagine as the highest goal scorer in the MPFL. I think he scored about 23 goals. And after that season, he left the shores of Nigeria for greener pastures. There's also yeah. Ibrahim Alassane, Sunday Alimi. And for the rumored moves, you have the likes of Olari Wajukayade, Samuel Adigbenro, and Shehu Abdullahi. All these guys lighting up Turkish football over there in Turkey. Mm. Uh, very true. Now, talking about the rumors, uh, the man online, Waju Karedi, was also very, very exceptional last season for Gaziantep, uh, you know, in the Turkish Super League. You know, he got he scored fantastic goals for this team. And his goal was almost, uh, 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 he almost scored, rather, uh, the best goal in the league last season, if not for the VAR that cancelled uh, that goal. And uh, we, we hear rumors that, you know, his, he, might, he might be coming back to the Turkish Super League as a host of teams, you know, are definitely trying to cut this man uh, back to the Turkish Super League. You know something, when you know how to do the business of football properly on the field of play, uh, everyone will surely be looking at ways to bring you back to their team because he made a mark out here in Turkey and I believe that a, a lot of teams will surely want him to come and uh, play for them. The man Samuel Adegbero has been doing so well for BK Rosenborg out there uh, in the Norwegian League and I see him as a player uh, who has a very bright future ahead of him and coming down to Turkey uh, might not be a bad idea at the end of the day for him. Uh, so far, he still comes down here and uh, does very well uh, for uh, the team. Now, Sheo Abdullahi, uh, for Sheo's case, I think uh, it's a thing of him playing in the first division in the Turkish League. And uh, we remember in the past when Genesra has talked about uh, players, you know, who want to play for the Super League should be playing for the top division side of their respective leagues. Uh, Sheo Abdullahi is one man who has so much quality uh, for his team, Bursa Sport, out here in the Turkish uh, first division league. Uh, he's done so well for them. He's a leader for, he's a, he, rather, he's a, he's, he's a leader out there for them. Uh, he's been able to uh, galvanize that team together and push them forward. They just missed out on promotion uh, last season. But talking about this season, I believe a lot of Super League teams have seen that this man is not meant to be uh, in uh, Brussels 4. He should be playing in the topmost division uh, out here in this league. So a lot of teams right now, both inside Turkey and outside Turkey, are definitely looking for a way uh, to cut this man. And also, one man. Who, who we saw is currently training uh, with a Turkish uh, first division side, uh, Tuzla Spor, uh, in the person of Chidebe Wakali. I remember him uh, in the under 17 back in 2013, where he was the teammate of uh, uh, Super Eagles player Kelechi Ihan Achua. We hear also uh, he might be signing uh, for Tuzla Spor at the end of the day out here in the Turkish League. Wow, great one for Nigerian players out there. And with all these players getting to sign uh, top deals outside the shores of Nigeria, uh, it means that there's a bright future for the Super Eagles of Nigeria. The same thing we've been preaching year in, year out for uh, Nigerian footballers. Uh, right about now, you can see that Nigerian players are like the most uh, attractive set of players uh, in European football. You know, recently we saw what happened with our own uh, Victor Osimhen. Victor you know, how uh, he made that switch uh, to Napoli. It's a very, very uh, good one for the country, you know, because everyone will be asking the question, if we can get an Osimhen, uh, which means there are so many other Osimhens, you know, out there uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, Nigeria. And also another man yesterday who made the switch uh, to CSK Moscow uh, in uh, uh, Russia, talking about Chidera Ijuke. Another interesting talent. You could see how these talents are springing up left, right, and center, uh, lighting up the European team. It tells a lot, you know, about the quality uh, in Nigerian football. Uh, that wherever our players go to, they always shine, but they don't wither. Wow, thank you very much. And uh, looking at the restart of the league now, what, what measures are they taking, the medical um, officials? What are they doing to ensure safety of players and fans? Because recently we heard that uh, for English football, Fans will be allowed to wear face masks into the stadium, but when they get to their seats, they can take it off and um, 
and no celebration of goals and all that. They should also maintain social distancing, which I do not agree with. If you're going to get into the stadium, you have to have your mask on from beginning to the end of the game. But I don't know what it, uh, what it is over there uh, for the Turkish League. Uh, uh, right about that in Turkish League, I believe uh, they will be continuing uh, what they started uh, uh, after the resumption from the pandemic, you know, uh, just only the players, uh, no fans allowed uh, into the stadium. That's playing behind closed doors. And also, we know how uh, the position, the players, you know, talking about the, the bench, you know, whereby they have to uh, sit uh, 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 far away from each other, you know, just to uh, be very cautious. Uh, but looking at what happened in the English Premier League, it's very funny, you know, where you say wear your mask into the stadium, but where you get in, you can remove it. Uh, I think uh, these restrictions, you know, uh, are very funny to me. You know, they're very, very funny. And uh, I believe with time, you know, we'll surely get uh, out of this pandemic and things will return back to normal. Mm.